Jesus name and even to those that are tuned into our service tonight amen we'd like to welcome you to Grace Apostolic Church and always glad to have you to tune in to our services amen whether it's on Sundays or whether it's on Wednesday as we study the truth of the word of God together or we come together in praise and worship to the Lord in the preaching service we're always glad for you to tune in to our services and trust that when you tune in that you are being blessed Amen, as the Lord is yet blessing us and whatever we can do to help you to develop your relationship with God, that's why we're here. And we are just servants of the Lord striving to do his will. So God bless you as well. Well, tonight, brothers and sisters, we want to get into the word of God. <clears throat> we are in a Bible reading journey in the book of Proverbs. Amen. And wow. How awesome is the word of God in the book of Proverbs. And I hope that everybody is on the journey with us. Amen. Because the word of God is not something to just be on our shelves or on our tables, but it is something to live by. And so I trust that we'll make it a part of our lives. Our former pastor, I remember him teaching one time, and he said something that has remained with me across the years. And that is, you only have as much of God as you have his word. Amen. Can I say that again? You only have as much of God as you have of his word. Because the Bible says, John 1 and 1, if you know it, help me. Quote that, in the beginning. <clears throat> See why you need to say in the word? Can't even quote it. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So you cannot separate God from his word. God is the word and the word is God. He says what he means. He means what he says. And, and John 1 and verse 14, same book, Gospel of John says, and the word was what? All right, so there you have it. You only have as much of God as you have of his word. So the more of the word you have, the more of God you have. How about that? And when you combine that with being filled with the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God, what a combination. All right, I'm in the teaching already. If y'all ain't paying attention, let me just say something here yeah, that it may help you. And you. This might be even helpful for you. You only have as much of the word, uh, or you only have as much of God as you have the word of God. Got that point? Right. And when you combine that with the fact that God has given to us the Holy Ghost, which is the spirit of God, that's a powerful combination. Now, why do I say that's a powerful combination? The very first book of the Bible is the book of what? Genesis. And when we read the creation story, those were the two combinations that we read. We had the spirit moved on the waters and God said. It was the spirit that moved and the word that was spoken that brought about the creation. The power of God is demonstrated by his spirit and his word. Right. You hold on to that? Yes, when you really want the power of God, the miraculous power, the creative power of God demonstrated in your life, then you must understand the operation of both the spirit of God and the word of God. Very, very important. But the book of Proverbs we're reading this week, and I'm encouraging everybody that's not on board with us, come on board. We're reading chapters 9 through 16 this week. Chapters 9 through 16. Now, <clears throat> see if we can just uh, engage you a little bit here tonight before we go into the lesson. Does anybody, this is Wednesday, right? Does anybody remember anything that you read so far this week? Let me see your hand. I see one hand. I see two hands. I see a third hand. All right. Praise the Lord. All right, Sister B, tell me anything that you remember. The 
The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh what? Rich. rich. And, and no sorrow. He added no sorrow. no sorrow to it. All right? So, good. Who else is saying that I see? Elder Clements? Yes. All right. Fruit of the righteous is tree of life. He that went of souls is wise. Sister Kathy? Wisdom is the fruit of the spirit. And she's hewn out her seven pillars. Wisdom have built her house and hewn out her what? Seven pillars. What are the seven pillars of wisdom? My, my, my. Anybody else, do you remember anything that you've read so far on the journey? Praise the Lord. Deacon Freeman. Uh, as far as they say, uh, give instructions to the wise man, and he will get the wise man. All right, yes. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will yet be wiser. Praise the Lord. All right, anybody else? And we're going to get ready to move on. Do you remember, Sister Boyd? Foolish man, something's gonna happen to him. That's right. There's gonna be some destruction to somebody that's not wise. So I don't want to be destroyed. What about you? I want to be counted among the wise. All right, I want you to turn to the book of Proverbs. We actually go into James, but I want to. Uh, <clears throat> Put a foundation on our lesson tonight from the book of Proverbs, and I pray that you brought your heart and your mind here with you. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to Proverbs 8 and 33. We're gonna, we're gonna get some foundational word, and then we're going to the book of James, chapter 3. We'll probably stop by chapter 1 and get some reference there when we get to James. But Proverbs first. Chapter number eight. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. And verse number 32. Proverbs chapter eight and verse number 32. If everybody has it, let's read aloud. Now therefore hearken unto me. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children. Blessed are they that keep my ways. All right. For blessed are they that keep my ways. Now, this is wisdom talking, by the way. This is wisdom talking. One of the things I would tell you that is key in the book of Proverbs is wisdom is being personified. So is understanding. So sometimes it is likened unto a certain kind of a woman. And sometimes foolishness is personified or illustrated as a certain kind of woman. The Bible is filled with a lot of illustration and it often gives us some metaphors or examples in order for us to gain the understanding. So I want us to understand while we're going through the journey of Proverbs, uh, it will sometimes be referred to like a woman. Not just any woman, but a certain kind of woman, all right? It gives us a character, in other words. Wisdom has a character. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about wisdom here tonight, but let's let's go a bit further. Now we just read thirty two. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. This is a powerful verse because many people seek the blessing of God. 
And in order to be blessed by God, we have to obey God's word. We have to understand there are rules for being blessed. Rules for being blessed. When we talk about being blessed, there are several definitions, either from the Hebrew or from the Greek, and one definition is to make happy. Another definition would be to obtain the favor of God. All right? The other definition would be obtaining that which is long and lasting or enduring. All right? Now, either of those definitions, brothers and sisters, is what's important for us to understand what it really means then to be blessed. Notice here again, blessed are they that keep my ways, which means then it must go further than me hearing the word. All right? How many people are going to church in 2020? How many people have been in church, faithful attenders to church? We are not blessed merely because of going to church. Yeah. Right. Because the word instructs us, and we'll get there in a minute, that we are to be doers of the word and not hearers only, only deceiving ourselves. Another reference that we uh, need to bear in mind is from Matthew chapter number 7. When Jesus comes to the conclusion of his discourse, he says, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto what kind of man? Wise man. We're talking about wisdom tonight. Wise man, which built his house upon the what? Rock. And what happened? The rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat up on that house, and it fell not because it was what? Founded upon the rock. But then, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and I, I, I want to bring this to you, I hope you bring this in focus in your own life. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a who? Foolish man. Foolish man which built his house of all the what? Same. Same. Same situation. Same trials. Same situation comes to the man that builds his house upon the sand. What is that? And the rain descended, floods came, and the winds blew, beat up on that house, the Bible says, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. It didn't just fall, but it was a great fall. Because it did not go beyond hearing. What a word for us tonight to be reminded of. What a word for us to be informed of for those that don't know. But what a word for the people of God to be reminded. We must go beyond just hearing the word. Notice again from the verse we read in Proverbs chapter 8. Now therefore hearken unto me, that's not all, O ye children, for blessed are they that what? Keep my ways. This means that there has to be some action. That means there must be a proper response to the word of God. Even the word that you will hear tonight, it is the word of God. What is my response to the word? When the lesson is over, when servants have dismissed, what is and what will be my response? That's where the blessing will be. When I want the, the favor of God, then I have to go beyond, I went to church on Wednesday night. Not good enough. Got to go beyond, I went to church on Sunday. Not good enough. Almost everybody's doing that at some point, sometime. Right. But the, the real question tonight is how many of us are obedient to the word that we hear? Well, let's get now verse number 33. 
All right, Proverbs 8, 33. Read. Hear instruction. All right, hear instruction. And be wise. And be wise. We're going to be dealing with wisdom tonight. Hear instruction and be wise. In order to be wise, you've got to keep his ways. You've got to be a doer of the word. Hear instruction and be wise and don't refuse the word. Refuse it not. Which, which means we, we've got to watch our attitude toward God's word. Right. Hear instruction and be wise. That's a key word in the book of Proverbs, by the way, because there is no wisdom. If you want to take note on this, there is no wisdom without instruction. There is no wisdom without instruction. If you're keeping up with the reading, you'll find out that there are verses of scripture that talk to us about the instruction of wisdom. When we read in the very first chapter, the purpose of the Proverbs is spelled out to us. So let's back up there in the first chapter. All right. Their first chapter. And let's go to verse number one. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Proverbs 1 and 1. If everybody has it, let's read. Proverbs of Solomon. All right. The Proverbs of Solomon. Son of David. Son of David. Now, this is important to know the writer. And to be aware of this reference here because Solomon was considered the wisest man that had lived. God had gifted him or he had endowed him with wisdom. This man was blessed because of the wisdom that he had gained from God. He was noted and known of all surrounding nations for his wisdom. So it's important for us to know this as it relates to the book of Proverbs, all right? Now, verse two, we began to go into the purpose of the Proverbs, all right? What's the purpose of Proverbs, verse two? All right, now notice these are key words throughout the book, what you'll read in the first chapter. To know wisdom and instruction. All right, to what? Perceive the words of understanding. These are key, these are pillars, these are foundational to being blessed. These are where you build wealth and riches. And if you follow in the Proverbs, you'll find out that all of these things uh, that we're covering here, wisdom, instruction, understanding, these are the things that make one rich. Not silver, not gold, not rubies. It's not that. Does anybody follow what I'm saying here tonight? At some point, and I want us to hear the word of God talk to us here tonight, we're inclined to feel in life that we need so many things and really what is needed is what we're reading right here the things that from a human standpoint that many people long after are not the things that's going to give us success praise the Lord when we follow the word of God and when we understand the purpose of God. These are the key elements for success. These are the key elements that make us rich. It's not material possessions and the things that we seek after in this carnal life. These are the things that deceive people. Oh Lord, I can see I'm not going to have time tonight. I said these are the things that deceive people. Let's start again. Verse 2, we're going to go further. What's the purpose of Proverbs? To know wisdom and instruction. What else? 
to receive the words of understanding, yes, to receive the instruction of wisdom. You notice I said a moment ago, there is no wisdom without instruction. Once you see that from the first chapter, there is no wisdom without instruction. So, again, verse 3, to receive the instruction of wisdom. This is the purpose. What else? Justice, Justice and judgment, and, judgment and, equity. and equity. Yes, read. Yes. All right, to give subtlety to the simple. To the young man, what? Knowledge and discretion. Look at this. Knowing wisdom, instruction, perceive the words of understanding, receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment, and equity or insight. Uh, to give subtlety to the simple and to the young man, knowledge and discretion. All right? You didn't deal with subtlety, you're, you're, you're dealing with skill. God wants us to understand the elements for success. Praise the Lord. Anybody ready for the word tonight? Amen. How many of you want the Lord to help you to truly be successful? Amen. I'm telling you, the things that men go after in this life are not the things that will ultimately make success. These are the keys. And if you go through Proverbs, you'll find out what true riches are all about. I think last week one of the uh, uh, text messages that I sent out to everybody uh, was encouraging us in the Bible reading journey last week so that we will understand what the true riches are. Yes. True riches. Everybody say true riches. True riches. All right. Now that fourth verse said to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and what's that last word in verse four? Everybody say this question. That's a huge word. Somebody help me right quick. What, what is meant by discretion? Sister Parks? Um, like you know how to speak and act so it's not to offend someone. Knowing how to speak or act. All right? So it's not to offend somebody. Anybody else? The term discretion. Uh, let, let, me, let me give you a hint. Some of you all are familiar with TV. Uh, you remember they would put on some movies, ain't, ain't hardly nothing uh, that's decent anymore on TV, but they used to put when certain kind of shows or movies or something was coming, they, they said parental discretion advised. What is meant by discretion? Come on, help me out somebody. Oh, everybody speaking at once, this boy. An individual's choice or judgment. This is, this is Kathy. Make wise decisions. All right. Being able to make wise decisions. Discretion. God's word. The Proverbs is a part of the Holy Scriptures. Everybody tell the Lord thank you. So what do we get? God wants us to be wise. God wants us to receive instruction. God wants us to receive the words of understanding. He wants you to have understanding. God wants us to be skillful. He wants us to have subtlety. He wants us to have knowledge. And God wants us to have discretion. Another word for discretion, you can uh, put alongside of that word, discernment. Being able to discern between right and wrong, good and evil. That you will see throughout the book of Proverbs as well. We're talking about what actually makes for success. Amen? All right. Now, get the fifth verse here. This is the first chapter. Read. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding a loaded verse. 
one that I make reference to for my own life. Since married, I make reference to a wise man. Everybody look this way. Everybody look this way. And because um, you'll find in the Proverbs that a lot of reference is given to children and to young men. Why? Because the challenge to listen is more prevalent while you're young. Everybody didn't look this way. It's still true anyhow. I said the, 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 the challenge to listen is stronger, is more prevalent while you're young because as you get older, when you first are getting older, there is a tendency in human nature, so I ain't picking on nobody in particular, there's a tendency in human nature to feel like I know what I'm knowing. I don't need nobody to tell me what to do. Everybody say wrong. That's one of the biggest lies ever told. You need more you need more told to you after you get grown than you did when you was a child. How many of y'all find that out? I need more instruction after I get grown because I got more to deal with. Talk back to me, somebody. So if I don't learn that principle while I'm young, I'm in trouble. I wish I had time to teach you tonight. I said if I don't learn that principle while I'm young, I'm in trouble early in my life. Praise the Lord. That's why he even addressed the young man in the fourth verse. All right? But a wise man will hear. A wise man will increase learning. A wise person does not go around thinking that they know it all. Amen. Amen. He will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain under wise counsels. How many of you found out you do need some advice while you go through this life? Amen. Amen. One of the reasons is you ain't been through here before. I said amen somebody. Amen. Haven't been through here. It's God's way. It's God's order. So these are the keys for success in our lives. Well, let's get the sixth and we're going to go to the seventh verse. All right, the sixth verse says to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise. This is the purpose. These, these verses down through verse six is outlining what the purpose of the proverbs are. Now, just bear in mind that these proverbs are not just the words of Solomon. But the book of Proverbs becomes a part of the Holy Scriptures, which means it is the word of God. God utilized this man to release wisdom to those that will hear and increase learning. All right, the seventh verse, this is a very key verse in the whole book. Read. Fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of knowledge. Is the beginning of knowledge, but wisdom and instruction. Now, if you have a highlighter, or uh, you don't mind marking or underlining in your Bible, or either, just make a note about wisdom and instruction because they do go together. And I'm putting emphasis on this because there are people that feel like that they want to try to claim wisdom and go after wisdom, but if you are not a person that is set on receiving instruction and humbling yourself to instruction, you'll never achieve wisdom. Right. Amen. Instruction is one of the elements of wisdom. And this is why he made reference uh, uh, to it earlier, to know wisdom and instruction and then down uh, in verse 7, fools despise wisdom and instruction. They go hand in hand. All right, so we read from the 8th verse, uh, I mean the 8th chapter and the 32nd and the 33rd verse. Now, I want you to go back to 8. We're going to read verse 34. Chapter 8, verse 34. We're talking about wisdom. The head of the James. 
Praise God. All right, 8 and 34. I hope everybody's reading. Let's read aloud. Read. All right, blessed is the man that what? Heareth me. Watching daily at my gates. All right. There is a realm. There is a territory of wisdom. Wisdom has a resonance. In other words, this is another metaphor that helps us to understand you cannot just get wisdom anywhere. One of the words of wisdom tonight is the word called discretion. <clears throat> discretion. We got to discern what's good and what's evil. We got to discern between what is right and what is wrong. I cannot obtain wisdom everywhere. I have to make sure I'm in the right place. Blessed is the man that heareth me. Now, brothers and sisters, a word to the wise tonight is be careful who you listen to. Can I say it again? I said word to the wise is be careful who you listen to. Notice in the 34th verse, blessed is the man that heareth me. You're not going to be blessed hearing and listen to everybody. If it is important to you to be blessed in your life, it must be important who you choose to listen to. Hallelujah. Now, brothers and sisters, as a reference, I mean, you don't have to turn there, but by now, most of us in here will be able to quote this one. It's Psalm 1, verse 1, just on this point. We're talking about wisdom tonight. Everybody say wisdom. Wisdom. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the nor standeth in the way of, nor sitteth in the seat of. You can't listen to everybody and be blessed. Watch what I'm saying to you tonight. What would you say if I told you that a lot of people miss their blessing not because of what they're doing, it's just who they're listening to? Your ears become a way that your mind gets fed. Lord, help me here tonight. Can I say that again? Your ears become a way that your mind gets fed. In other words, you're going to process what you hear. What you hear will tend to lay up in your mind. This is important, saints. This is important, this is important, and all too often there are people that take for granted what they hear. How many of you believe you are affected by what you hear? Amen. Oh yes you are. You are affected by what you hear. One of the things, word to the wise tonight, Guard your gates. You making a note? That's a word of wisdom right there. Guard your gates. What you mean, Bishop? Guard your eye gates. Guard your ear gates. Be careful what you let into you. I feel the Holy Ghost helping us here tonight. And may I say this, brothers and sisters? The Holy Ghost is not just when we get emotional with the music in that, when it's Sunday, and the song and the music get going. I'm telling y'all the Holy Ghost is real and present right now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I can praise him right now for the reality of his presence in the form of his word. 
I could talk to us a while anyway about the presence of the Lord because so many people are deceived about the presence of the Lord. And we would need to get into the study of the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant to understand the presence of the Lord. Because the presence of the Lord is not a feeling, y'all. Right. The presence of the Lord is not a feeling. Much of the Bible is illustrated, metaphoric. Why is there a tabernacle? Why is there tabernacle furniture? Why is there that kind of description? Because God is trying to break something down to us to give us, everybody shout, understanding. understanding. I said quite often last year that one of the greatest gifts that God has given to us is the gift of of understanding. What I'm praying for is that God will give us a revelation of that. So that we cherish the most wonderful gifts that there are. Praise the Lord. So we have to, we have to understand how important it is then for us to gain the blessings of the Lord. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, watching at the post of my doors. So you have to make sure you're in the right place. You have to make sure that you pay attention where you choose to dwell. You have to be careful of your actions. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful that you don't end up at the wrong gates. Be careful that you don't show up at the wrong doors. Talk back to me, somebody. Wisdom is saying, blessed is the man that will hear me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. All right? 35. All right? Read. Look out, somebody. A whoso, don't sound like anybody's reading. Uh, we in Proverbs 8 and verse number 35. I'd like to request if everybody will open up your mouth, utilize your voice, and let's read together. Verse 35. Whoso findeth me, findeth find life. Now, wisdom, wisdom here. This is the lesson here tonight. It is the word of the Lord for tonight. Wisdom. Whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain grace, which is the favor of the Lord. Uh-oh, look out, verse 36. He that sinned against me, wrong with his own soul. Oh, they that hate me means they love death. Back up to chapter 7 now. Watch the direction of the Lord. Glory to God. All right. Verse 4, 4, I just want to break in here and make a Make a point. Verse 4 of chapter 7, read. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister. These are the things that we need to be able to relate to. When you talk about sister, kinswoman, you're talking about people that are related to you. What the scripture is teaching us here is these are things we need to be able to relate to. Go to chapter 4. Verse number 7. Praise the Lord. We're in the book tonight. Praise the Lord. Verse 7. Everybody read. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, do what? 
Now, wisdom is the important thing. Wisdom is what needs to rule. Re wisdom needs to be what reigns. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, do what? Lord, I wish we had time. Drop down to verse 13. This is word to the wise tonight. Verse 13, read. Take fast hold of instruction. When it says take fast hold, it means take firm hold of instruction. Read. Let her not go. Let her not go. Keep her. She is thy life. Verse 14. All right, what I'm doing right now is showing you the instruction of wisdom. These are instructions, by the way, in these verses. Wisdom has instruction. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. It's another one of those passages of scripture that talks to us about association. Praise the Lord. If I'm going to be blessed by God, then I have to watch my environment. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you tonight. Thank you, Lord. Now you that appreciate the word tonight, tell the Lord, thank you. It matters what my association is. Number one, it matters to God. Number two, it should matter to us. Matter of fact, whatever matters to God should matter to us. Praise the Lord. What the instruction of wisdom says is enter not into the path of the wicked. The wicked has their path. It's called the wrong way. Praise the Lord. And wisdom says don't go that way and go not in the way of evil men. You got to watch what kind of people you are around. Amen. Praise the Lord. Every now and then, brothers and sisters, we need some old-fashioned wisdom. Yes, sir. We need to hear the word of God. Sometimes my problem is I'm in the wrong company. Sometimes what's hindering me from making progress. I'm in the wrong company. Praise the Lord. So don't enter into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Now watch verse 15. Everybody read. Avoid it. Avoid it. Pass, not Pass not by it. Turn from it. Turn from it. Pass away. This is a powerful word of instruction. As a child of God, I am instructed to avoid some things. Don't even give it opportunity. Let the church say amen. amen. I'm talking about the word of the Lord is what is called a word to the wise. If I'm going to be happy, if I'm going to be blessed, in other words, God tells me that some things you need to avoid. Avoid the path of the wicked. And don't go in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Praise the Lord. You see, I'm so thankful that God has given to us the reality of truth. See, truth, being saved, is not being hyped up and going to church and promising you and Three spins in the air and you're going to have your blessing. You run around the church in this next minute here, your bills will be paid by Friday. Talk back to me, somebody. Somebody shout foolishness. No, 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 no. You got to live this thing. Blessing of the Lord does not come 
with hype. It's not a make-believe reel to make you get all buttered up and, and get you all hyped up while you're in church. But when you leave out the church, there's no reality of God in your life. No, if I'm going to be truly blessed by God, what you say is to me, the blessing of the Lord. Talk back to me. Make it what? Rich. And he had it. See, that's what you got when you follow the Lord, when you, when you give heed to the instruction of wisdom. Don't want to go to church and get hyped up. Live in a make-believe realm, and you don't want to preach a lie to you. Just to make you feel good while you're in church. What is that? But when you leave out from the house of God, I need the power of God working in my life. This is what is called what's real. There's some do's and don'ts. There's some things I must do. There's some other things I have to avoid doing. If God's blessing is going to work in my life. It ain't because of how high the tide, tide got in a service. How the preacher hooped it and made you spin around and shout like that. All that stuff make us feel good. But that's not true. And neither is that wisdom. The instruction of wisdom is one of the purposes of the book. To show us how to actually live. To show us how to actually live. Everybody look this way again. Because this is a doctrine that the devil never wants proclaimed. You do need to watch your association. Amen. Amen. That's true. Amen. 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 And we need to watch it sometime more closer than what we're really willing to watch. Sometimes we need to study it. Let me study my association. Let me see who I'm hanging around. All right, sir. All right. Don't just get caught up in what you do. Praise the Lord. I told you I feel the Holy Ghost because we need to understand the genuine Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost always get, put you in alignment with the Word. All right. I hope you get that. The Holy Ghost will put you in alignment with the Word. It ain't just going to make you emotional and all that. Come on, y'all. No. There's something called the spirit of truth. And you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Praise the Lord. I want us to hear God tell us in the night that in order for us to be blessed by God, we got to watch our association. Praise the Lord. Blessed are they that, that keep my way. Blessed are they. That's what he said. Watching daily at my gates. All right? Take fast hold of instruction. Don't let her go. Keep her. She is thy life. Enter not in the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. You must watch association because every association is not good association. Some association does you more evil than good. That's why the word discretion is in this book several times. God help me to discern between good and evil in people. You've got to live in such a way, I'm not accepting everything from everybody. And if that's the way a person gonna be, it won't be a part of my company. Come on. You gotta, you, you gotta, the scripture says, you got to avoid it. Don't even enter into the path of the wicked. Praise the Lord. Avoid it, pass not by it, don't even get close to it. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. This is the real God helping you with your real life. 
Sometimes we're too close to what's wrong to obtain what's good. So God says, don't excuse yourself because I didn't do exactly what they did, but you might be too close to it. The influence of it is too close to you. It's still impacting you in your mind. It's still doing some things, creating problems for your flesh. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Avoid it. I feel the Holy Ghost here. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it. I want to show you how the Lord will help you with his word. So if I did get in the direction of a thing, God said, well, turn from it. Don't stay there. Right. Now, when you deal with turn from it, this brings in another spiritual virtue called repentance. Because to repent means you must turn a different direction. To repent means to change one's mind. From the Greek word in the New Testament, it would mean metanoia. It's a word which means you have to change your direction and your mind. Sometimes getting away from certain environments will help your mind not to dwell on it. Right. Talk back to me, church. Right. Praise the Lord. I don't need my head filled with some stuff. Got enough problems in the flesh. I don't need nothing feeding my weaknesses. I don't need anything that's negative to me being spiritually strong in the Lord. So some environments I am instructed. The instruction of wisdom is avoided. Pass by it, turn from it, and pass away. Get away from it. I wonder if anybody hear the Holy Ghost talk to you this Wednesday night saying, get away from it. That's all, because I want to tell you, I was saying to you earlier, that when you deal with the word being God, then you have to understand God is a spirit. So if you have the word of God and the spirit of God from Genesis right on through the rest of the Bible, that have always been the divine combination. And the spirit of God works with the word of God if you don't believe it. Go and study the book of Judges, especially chapters 13 through 15 or through 16, and read about Samson. As long as Samson kept the Nazarite vow that it was given by God or kept the word, he had as much strength as he needed in the spirit. And so do you. And so do I. The power of the Holy Ghost works with our obedience to the word of God. How many of you all believe that tonight? Amen. How many of you have found out the more obedient I am, the more the power of the Holy Ghost works in my life? Yes. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, that's God's order. That's God's way of power. You don't have God's power working in your life when you are resistant to the word of God. Holy Ghost works in connection with the word. Praise the Lord. All right. Uh, I want to get one other uh, verse of scripture. Praise the Lord. Did we get verse 7 of chapter 4? Verse 7? Yes. Did we get that? Mm -hmm. Let's get it one more time and let's go to James. 7 of chapter 4. Proverbs 4 verse 7. Wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Since that's the most important thing, that's what you need to go after. Therefore, get wisdom and get understanding. Lord, let me get on because I tell you, we can stay in progress. I'm enjoying the trip. This is Mary. I, I promise you, I feel like I'm just reading it for the first time. God's word is it's incredible. It's it's totally awesome. Somebody in here may know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go to James. 
Lord have mercy. God's going to take us deeper by his grace tonight to understand wisdom. If I were to ask you tonight, what is wisdom? Then perhaps some of you would define it by saying the ability to apply knowledge. All right. And I would not tell you that you are incorrect. But there is more depth to wisdom than what a lot of people give attention to. That's what I'm giving you here tonight. Praise the Lord, because God wants you blessed. And God wants to make you rich. All right. James 1. Praise the Lord. Let's read from verse number 1. These are words of wisdom in the New Testament. Let's read. James, Jesus, servant, of God, servant of God, and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the, to the twelve tribes, which are scattered abroad, greedy, greedy. yes, my brethren, my brethren count it all joy, word to the wise, boy, I've just been going through, <laughs> oh, it seems like I've been having some tests and some trials in my life. That's human. But brothers and sisters, don't stop your conversation there. Scripture said, count it all joy. In other words, calculate. Don't look at everything you go through as a child of God as a defeat. Lord have mercy. I feel God stricken me. Right then and there, Sister Serena, don't you count everything you're going through as a defeat. Count it all joy. Would y'all help me here tonight? And I'm not playing with you either, but would y'all help me right now? Give God praise right now. However you feel. Whatever is going on in your life, would you help me give God praise right now? Whatever you're going through, this is to the child of God. It's a word to the wise. Count it all. A-L-L. -L. Count it all, joy. Glory to God. Count it all joy. In other words, I don't want you sad. I don't want you defeated. I don't want you depressed. God said, I want you as my child. Calculate even your trouble. Count it joy. Lord, have mercy. God will teach you how to do math like your school teacher never taught you. Praise the Lord. Lord said that somebody would say in their mind, that don't add up, Pastor. That don't add up. That don't add up what I'm going to have on count that all joy. Right. You need to sit in the, the class of wisdom. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord said, I'll show you how to come up with the right answer. Praise the Lord. Count it all joy when you fall into divers. And divers means many. You, you fall into direst temptation, still counting all joy, not sadness, right, not defeat, not discouragement or depression. Count it all joy. Don't you realize the devil wants to get you depressed? Yes. Don't you know that he wants you to lose your praise? Don't you know that the devil don't want you to draw no water? I told you, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here tonight. I heard the prophet Isaiah saying, Isaiah 12, when joy shall you draw water. Right. I want to tell you why a lot of folks dry up because you ain't got no joy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Learn how to be happy. Paul, when he was being tried, he went before Felix, and before, uh, before Festus, and before government being tried, being tested, falsely accused. He said, I think myself happy. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Would to God that we would let God help us to think ourselves happy. <coughs> Praise the Lord. You can't allow any circumstance to dictate your happiness. Come on, saints. I'm not going to even deny it. I'm about to run my feelings. What they did to me on the job. Did nobody call me? They 
they didn't think about me. They forgot all about me. Praise the Lord. They charged me so much. There's a one thing right after another. How many of y'all found out you can talk your own self down? How many of you found out you can think yourself down? Talk back to me, saints. I know we don't like to be honest about that, but sometimes the reason why we're down here is because somebody pushes us all the way down in. Sometimes we program our own lives down. Because the way we chose to think, and instead of getting up from there, we dwell there. Creating an atmosphere and an environment. There's a whole climate now. That I created. I talk negative, I think negative, and I dwell around negative people. Oh, the heaven, there's a Holy Ghost in the room, in the room, in the room. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Isaiah 6 chapter, he said, in the year the king of Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. High, lifted up, train, filled the temple. Of it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. Y'all know Twain, he covered his face. Twain, he covered his feet. With twain, he did fly. They started crying one to another. Well, I'm so sad. No, they don't know what they did. They started crying one to another. No, but I didn't know. They didn't do that. They said, holy. They cried, said, holy. I wish I had a church here tonight, brothers and sisters. Come on, y'all. Let's get our minds on Jesus. Y'all think I'm just talking, but I'm not. I told you, Holy Ghost in the room right now. He's trying to take get your mind on Jesus. Come on, help me shout, Holy. 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 There's a Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. I don't want to talk so much about the devil. I want to talk about the Lord. I want to think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done. Yes, sir. I want to talk about somebody shot glory. Whole earth is filled with his glory. Look like trouble all over the land. Ain't what I want to see. I want to see the glory of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Get your mind elevated as you sit up in here. Don't you dare come up in the house of God and let the devil sit on you being defeated. You think about everybody that don't like you and everybody you got a problem with and everything that's wrong and everything that's ugly. What the world is matter with us? Think about the greatness of our God. Lord have mercy. I'm talking about the word to the wise. Wisdom. Praise the Lord. Did anybody ever read a verse like this? Wisdom have built in her house. Yeah, what you building? Praise the Lord. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Verse 3, we in James, word to the wise. Read. Oh, see, when we were in Proverbs, y'all connecting the dots here now? One of the elements of wisdom, one of the elements and one of the purposes of the Proverbs is to teach us knowledge. Are y'all with the lesson tonight? Praise the Lord. You count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, not based on feeling, but based on knowledge. Thank you. Oh, I need to say that again. I'm going to make sure you understand. We're not talking about the way you feel. Y'all want to know what a good prayer is? And I think I'm just as human as anybody else in here. But here's a good prayer. One I'm practicing. Lord, help me to overcome my feelings. I, 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 I admonish you, saints, it's a good prayer. Because it remains that there is nobody that has ever caused you as much problem as you have caused you. You are your worst enemy. Don't you dare point at nobody. And make them your problem. You said, I ain't one, Bishop. Yes, you are. In your mind, you are. Your thoughts are fingers. You got a hundred fingers pointing at folk. You keep your mind on folk more than you keep your mind on Jesus. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A word to the wise here tonight. Praise the Lord. You do not count it all joy. You do not handle your trials, your tribulations well based on your feelings. You do not count it all joy when you are operating on your feelings. You can't calculate right when you are operating on your feelings. The element of wisdom is knowledge. God don't want you learning to conduct your life on your feelings. Your feelings will kill you. Amen. 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 Whose feelings, Bishop? All of our feelings. Right. Your feelings are so roller co coaster. They'll take your mind off Jesus. Take your mind off everything positive. I say your feelings will do it. God, help me to overcome the way I feel. If y'all bolded up in here, because this would be a defeat over the devil. If y'all bolded up, pray when we said, Lord, help me to overcome my feelings. If you would really be sincere with God, it would be a victory over Satan tonight. Hallelujah. Because ultimately, that's all that's ever wrong with any of us. You cannot get defeat when you get into the Word. He don't show you how to harbor feelings. He don't show you how to harbor discouragement and anger. He don't show you how to do that. The only way those things are getting the best of me is I got to be in disobedience. Right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My brother. My brethren. Can I talk to my brethren tonight? My brother, count it all joy. Right, sir. In other words, when he said count it all, don't leave no room to be unhappy. Right. See, did y'all ever read a verse like this that said, neither give place to the devil? Amen. Y'all know what I mean? Everybody look this way. You know what that means? That the only place and the only time that the devil got a place is when you give him one. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil. I mean, stand up against him. Oh, no, you ain't. To rob me of my joy. No, you not fixing to take my bit. No, you not fixing to take my prayer. And no, you not fixing to take my love. All right. You don't like that one, do you? Make me be all upset and out of sort, but somebody don't know you not. Alright. Don't make me that's a trick. Everybody steer it this way. When you got issues with people, it's a trick of the devil. Because when you can't forgive somebody, then you can't be forgiven. Look at that neighbor say it's a setup. You think the devil is a dumb, stupid devil? Of course he's not. He knows just exactly how to get under your skin. And he's watching those that operate in obedience and those that do not. If I'm one, if I'm one that's inclined to give in to my feelings, you are a prime target for the devil. I'm talking to you. Amen. I'm talking to you. Because God wants to help you. Not that make believe pretending you. Praise the Lord. Count it all joy. I get joy when I think about it. Well, if I'm going to think about it, I'm going to have to do the right kind of calculation. 
So instead of looking at something that really is a problem, let me think about how God has sustained me. Yes. Yes. Instead of focusing on how bad somebody treated me, thank God for the strength and the endurance he gave me. Oh. Come on, somebody. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Instead of looking at how much money I ain't got. Why don't I thank God that even when I've been broke, he still took care of me. That's right. Yes. Are right. y'all understand why I count it all yes. joy? Yes. Not based on the way you feel. I don't feel good being broke. Are y'all understanding me? But he said count it all joy knowing this. Verse 3 said what? Knowing this, that the Oh, I'm blaming everything and everybody. Hmm. Is there no one this? It's a trial of your faith. Mm -hmm. I'm saying if you trust in me. Tell me, see, if you're going to let that job be bigger than me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see if you trust me more than you trust money. I'm going to see if you're going to make your feelings God or you're going to let me be God. Knowing, 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 knowing. It is one of the elements of wisdom that we're reading in Proverbs. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding, discretion, subtlety, equity. These are the things that make you better. Not money, not houses and friends. Praise the Lord. All right, let's read verse 4. Because you're feeling funny now. <laughs> Woo! Help us, Lord. Verse 4 says, read. Oh, see, the trying of your faith, work of patience, you too impulsive. You ain't patient enough. I'm trying to shape your character. And you murmuring and complaining about what you're going through, but I, I let that happen because I was trying to knock off some rough edges off of you. Because you think you're so sweetly saved. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to teach you how to be patient because you want things to happen when you want it to happen. I'm trying to teach you the way of the Lord. I'm trying to teach you how to slow down. So that when everything is not happening the way you want it to happen, you don't think that your world is coming apart. Right. See, there is a such thing called God's time, not your time. There's a thing called God's time. Amen. Let patience have glory to God. Jesus. We're going to go back with a one book. In chapter 10 of Hebrews, he said, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Could I talk to you on a few minutes? Cast not away your confidence, which has what? Great, great, great. great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience. patience. Uh oh, watch this, watch this. Whole lot of folk in the church all over the world miss this one. You have need of patience that after you have done the will of God. See, you want to receive the promise and you ain't being obedient to God. <gasps> That when, look at that, that when somebody's answer to your prayer, right there. Oh, you trying to obtain an answer from me. You want the promise without obeying me. All right, sir. I said, help me out, sister B. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. I didn't forget about you. You have need of patience. Is this helping anybody tonight? You have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, now that's when you're going to get the blessing. That's when you're going to get the promise. Amen. What you want is you want to suppress all the things that you ought to be doing. Right. Yes. Because you have gotten more into the way you feel about a lot of things and you made that bigger than my word. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've actually made yourself God. 
You don't believe it? The Bible said rebellion. Let's see if we understand sin. We can watch and see if we understand sin. Rebellion is as a sin. Wait a minute. Rebellion is sin? Yes. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Witchcraft? How serious is that? Well, the Bible says something out of which to live. <gasps> mm, better think twice when you think about rebelling God's word. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as idolatry. Oh, see, the idol idolatry is not just them statues. So that's why you got to stay in the word so you know truth. Some other statues we got. Our stubbornness is a statue. And we bow them down to our own stubbornness. I'm telling you what the Bible says. You want to know what another area of idolatry is? Covetousness. Check it out. Book of Colossians. I think it's long about the third chapter somewhere there now. Mm-hmm. Well, you just think all those folk back in, in the uh, Middle East and ancient world that had them down as Moloch and, and Myrtle and, and all of those, uh, Astoreth and Astaroth, Mm -hmm. You thought all that was all God was talking about in idolatry? No. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as idolatry. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Praise the Lord. All right, let's get back over here, James, and let me get ready to wrap it up for tonight. Let patience have a perfect word that you may be perfect and entire, wanting or lacking nothing. Verse number five. Oh, it's possible that my real problem is I'm lacking wisdom. Seems like I just keep on having to deal with stuff. It may be that what I'm actually lacking is wisdom. Right. Uh, the mere fact that it's mentioned here is to arrest all of our attention. That yes. sometimes the thing that's really missing the most is wisdom. If any of you lack wisdom, what did he say? Let him pray. See, when you're praying, are you praying according to his will? What are you praying for? Sometimes the prayer might be wrong. If you're lacking wisdom, let him ask of God. Lord, help my prayer life to be in alignment with your word. Lord, give me wisdom dealing with this situation. I'm talking about being real with God, church. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm trying to show us how to get it right. Be in alignment with God. Give God no reason not to work in your favor. Sometimes you don't need everything and everybody to change. You need a change. Amen. I'm not talking at you. I'm talking to you because I'm right among you. I'm trying to tell you it ain't everything else that needs to change. Lord, help me to be a doer of your word. Help me to achieve this thing called wisdom. Amen. I'm reading Proverbs. Y'all are going to read it sometime. <laughs> Proverbs, by me, kings reign. Yes. You think them folk are just out there anyway? I'm the one. By me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yes. Right. We've got to go after wisdom. If any of you like wisdom, let him ask of God to give it to all men. What? And? A brain of not and? Shall be given him. Verse 6. See, I'm telling you, you got to pray right. Don't say I prayed. I've already prayed about it. I've already prayed about it. That don't mean you prayed right. Talk back to me, somebody. Number one, what are you praying for? Number two, are you praying for it like he said? Yeah, you prayed and you talked 
And you mentioned, but did you ask in faith? That's the critical question. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea. Now, so when prayers are not answered, here could be a possible reason, because verse 8 says what? Verse 7 rather says. So if I'm not asking God for wisdom, and I'm not even asking in faith when I do ask for it, then don't let that man think if I'm wavering in my faith, then don't even think that you're going to receive anything. Is that in the Bible? So he tells me there are some conditions under which I can know that I will not receive anything. Wow. Verse 8 said, a double-minded man. Go over to chapter 3 right quick, right quick, right quick. Got to get ready to go. Praise the Lord. Mm. Word to the wise tonight. My brethren, verse 1, my brethren, you're not many masters. I wish I had time. I ain't got time here, but let me paraphrase it right quick. This chapter is really about leaders. Don't be so quick to want to be in position because you, you're going to be held more accountable. My brother, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation to whom much is given. Talk back to me, church. Much is required. Ain't got time for this. For in many things, we have been all. I ain't got time to talk to you about this. See, truth will set you free. And you got to let God talk to you more than you allow the devil to talk to you and the flesh to talk to you. In many things, we have been all. Mm -hmm. If any man offend not in word, in other words, if you got a mouth, I guarantee you at some point you're going to offend somebody. Amen. And there is no such thing. Everybody repeat after me. There is no such thing as pleasing people. If any man offend not a word, the same as a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Verse 3 says, What? Behold, we put. It's in the horse of the mouth that they may obey us. And we turn about their what? Behold also the ships which though they be so great they are driven of fierce winds. Yet are they turned about with a very small helm. Whithersoever the governor listed. Verse 5. This is word to the wise. If you in Proverbs you're going to come across a lot of talks about the tongue. We're talking about a word to the wise. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts of what? Great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire can be. Verse 6, tongue is a fire, world of iniquity. So is the tongue amongst our members, daddy. Your tongue, word to the wise, watch what you say. Your whole life can be defiled by your mouth. Praise the Lord. It's a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it devoured the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of what? Yeah. So no, so no. Are y'all ready for this? So the worst way that you raise hell is with your mouth. I'm, I'm going to paraphrase what's in the Bible here. All right? <laughs> set on fire of hell. Raise in hell. Amen. Talk back to me, church. Hear the Holy Ghost talk to every one of us here tonight. Watch your mouth. Amen. Watch your mouth. Amen. I'm telling y'all, it's in progress. Watch your mouth on the phone. Watch your mouth that's working silently through your fingers while you're texting. <laughs> and while you're on the computer, I said, watch your mouth. Praise the Lord. Every kind of beast of birds and the servants of the things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed to mankind. But, verse 8, Tongue can no man take. It is a what? Unru unruly evil, full of what? Now watch this, saints. Let's go to church now. Verse 9. There we bless we God, even the Father. There we are, which are made after the what? Similitude of God. I was saying now, you see the blessing and curse of my brethren. 
How do you go to church? Amen. And sing the praises of God and stand up in the church, but then we got problem talking to each other. I'm giving you the word of God. Amen, Can doth a fountain rather send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brother, bear olive berries? Either a vine fig, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll tell you word to the wise. Verse 13 says what? Got to go. Verse 13, come on, right quick. Who is? The wise man. Y'all see all these elements of wisdom? Wise men endue with what? Knowledge, one of the elements. Endue with knowledge among you. Let him show out of a good what? The word conversation in the Bible is not just speech. It means conduct. How are you conducting yourself? Amen. Don't go to church and act like you're so sanctimonious. Don't appear so holy while you're in service, but you don't know how to treat your brother and sister. Come on, y'all. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about genuine Holy Ghost. I said genuine. See, close your Bible so y'all will think I'm through. Because I really am. See, what good, look at me. Don't look at nobody else in here. Look at me. What good does it do me to come out here and perform in the pulpit, doing what I do on Sunday and on Wednesday, but being after church, me and Deacon Park can have a, a decent conversation without raising hell. Because I want to tell you, in this church, don't expect me to excuse it. As the man of God, as I said, and I can look dead in your back, don't expect me to excuse it. He just talked about what the tongue does and sets on fire, the whole course of nature, and set on fire hell. How you singing about heaven raising hell? Somebody got to tell us the truth. You don't impress me with how impressive you are while service is going on. Amen. But you ain't got 5% of the Holy Ghost to know how to talk to nobody. Right. Right. But I get ugly and out of soul. Amen. You better go back and check and see, did I really receive what I'm supposed to receive? How do I claim to have the Holy Ghost? It ain't even giving me ability to be able to talk to nobody. Can't believe the pastor saying that. <laughs> well, how about we flip it around this way? I can't believe sometimes the way some of us are acting. All right. All right. Calling ourselves filled with the Holy Ghost. What kind of influence are you spreading around? Amen. Praise the Lord. These things ought not so to be. Y'all ought to go back and give yourself a bonus read. I didn't even get half through tonight. Because I'm trying to talk to y'all about wisdom. See, what we think wisdom is, it's even deeper. Right. There is a wisdom in that third chapter that's called devilish, which is of the world. And there is a wisdom that is from above. I wanted to get down, Sister Mary, wanted to get down to that verse that said, but the wisdom which is from above is peace. to be entreated. Yes, sir. Easy. Clap your hands and give God praise. Yes, now, when your pride settles down, go back and read <laughs> chapter 3 and let the Holy Ghost help you. As I've been trying to let it help me, humble yourself. That's all you got to do. Amen. And let God help you. Amen. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. And don't even grieve your brothers and sisters. Please don't grieve the pastor. Amen. Right. 
Because I'm not trying to play. I'm trying to help us be saved, y'all. Let's go on to perfection. And guess what, y'all? I'm sorry still works. Amen. 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 You know some of the only thing that's wrong. Y'all read Proverbs. Only by pride comes contention. Yeah. That's the Bible. Amen. Don't blame it on nothing else. You contending is because you got pride in the way. Because God told you how to deal with situations. Now, why don't you say that? I got the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Now, let's shout. But when you raise a hell, don't come in here shouting. I said amen. Don't get up and say. Matter of fact, don't do nothing but repent. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you tonight. Praise the Lord. Word to the wise. Come on, brother.